Hello? Shall we start? Okay, then today um, we uh, have the last chapter in our procurement management course that is for global sourcing. And uh, before we start with the class, I would like to share a little bit about our final exam. And uh, shall we start now? Are you? Okay, then uh, our exam will be on 21st of June, 21st of June from 1 p.m. And I think that uh, the school um, around the, the room is A407, A2, the room 407, okay? However, on the, the method, the format that uh, we do for our final exam is uh, option five, meaning that uh, each of you will receive the, the, the exam by the school. The school we send from uh, the school, receive the exam from Blackboard and start at 1 p.m. And the duration, the, the duration of the exam is about 90 minutes. Okay. Any question before we start with the last chapter? Then we start. So the global sourcing agenda for today we talk about worldwide sourcing. What are the factors in the framework and globalization? What about the strategy and supply chain? The risk and the benefit that are the globalization challenges and what are the logistic issues and what are the success factors in global sourcing. Worldwide sourcing, including international purchasing and global sourcing. International purchasing related to a commercial transaction between a buyer and a supplier in different country. Global sourcing involves proactively integrating and coordinating common item and material processes, design, technology, and supply across worldwide purchasing engineering and operating location. Now, the detail of four forces framework, four forces framework, app, 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 that including global market, technological forces, political and economic forces and global cost forces. So are uh, impact the global sourcing. Now, global market that include intent foreign competition and foreign demand cross the market present as a competitive right? challenging competitive price. The challenge in global market force. And technolo technological forces, what does it mean? That included advance in manufacturing and transportation communication in Satan. 
and technology knowledge, interim technology, and especially for local of R&D. We have to be selected to select the location of R&D because it will impact. Political and economical forces that include what are the exchange rate, how it impact, how it influence the pricing across the country, and what are the trade restrictions from country to country, and trade agreement and liberalization. And the last force that are the global cost forces. The impact of global cost forces that included the de decrease important and direct labor costs. That's why nowadays we have a lot of FDI invest in our country because we have a labor cost is more competitive than to other country. Political and economic forces also impact on that decision making also. However, new cost priority that impact in the global cost forces that including the increased capital and intensity of production facility. Now, if we talk overall, global market force refer to both foreign competitor and customer. And the firm react to foreign competitor market entry by approaching the competitor home market. That's why we have to reach the home market to get more competition. And foreign market often offer the higher demand for a product which is in particularly valuable when the local market is saturated. When the home, the local market is saturated, we look out the foreign market with the higher demand. The demand for foreign product has been heightened by free information flow and what is possible through internet. Now internet is like an open market. So the demand in the foreign product has been heightened and exposed. Now, the second force that a technological forces refer to a change in the source in other their development. And new industrialized country start to play a major role in providing a new technology. Of course, in a high um, advanced country, high development country, they have more technology to offer. Opportunity for interviewing collaboration, of course, more exchange from country to country offer more opportunity. The local force, local forces, local cost force is referred to cost of the labor. Cost of labor influence the choice of location for production facility. Of course, now if a country would like to invest some new development, they will look for a location, appropriate location. And number one priority in that choice of location to put the production intent facility or production line, what are the labor costs? how labor got impact. Increased interest is not only unskilled labor, also a low cost skilled labor, for example, in India. And 
labor cost saving are often overridden by increase in other costs. Additional training, bureaucratic government structure is cetera. So the global cost, the labor cost, a lot is hidden. So when we think about the cost of labor is low, we think about other additional training, bureaucracy, um, government structure also. That's also a hidden cost. So we have to consider on the, the factor to select the right location for facility investment. The third factor that in political and economic force refer to an exchange rate, like the tariffs, the quota, etc. So firm may benefit from location facility within the market instead of importing in it, etc. Or in the other hand, growing trend to work trade, labor relation offer easier market to access. So we have to think about some political and economical factor. Overall, globalization supply chain strategy for many companies nowadays, supply chain activity are the key to gain a competitive advantage as they focus on number one, opportunity in the global market. What about their opportunity? Number two, the need for type of compression strategy in order to cope with the shorter product life cycle and the provision of tailored service for customers. So how fast they can tailor fit to customer need. and rapid communication with customer and supplier. Those are the factor that impact the supply chain in the globalization. And nowadays, many companies put that as a competitive advantage. To achieve competitive advantage that we just talked about, what we understand what is the competitive advantage. And the simple definition is competitive advantage is an advantage that is sustainable over a long period. So that have to be sustained at a long period, brilliant on a system of capability rather than a single capability. So they have to think about system. The following has been identified as an opportunity for gaining a competitive advantage, such as number one, globalization, number two, integration, and high base competition. So those are the competitive advantage in supply chain that nowadays we consider that is globalization and how fast we can integrate the opportunity and what about the competition in the time span? How fast we can meet the demand of the customer. What is the globalization? What does it mean? Nowadays, globalization today, we have the opportunity to be global company regarding the world as the potential market or source of supply. Because nowadays, the business is not limited within the country. It's an open market and globalization considered as the biggest opportunity. Because of the potential market, 
and it's unlimited demand and supply. And many companies nowadays, they are finding the competitive advantage through catering to the world market by they coordinating the diaspora procurement, manufacturing and logistic activity. So that is the combination, that is the combination through procurement, manufacturing, logistic, et cetera. Ah. Recording in progress. So that is about globalization. Another competitive advantage nowadays, that is integration. Supply chain members need to be integrated in terms of their processes, activity, and system. So the integrating that is the, the strength. And integrating is vital for company operating internationally. If we want to maximize the strength, we have to simplify the process. We have to integrate activity and system into the organization. And advantage of integration include improve the quality, innovation sharing, and as a result, it can help to reduce the cost and to improve the scheduling of production and delivery. As said, those are the strengths of globalization. Those are the strengths of competitive advantage. If we do have the integration, we can improve quality, we can have innovation sharing, we can share learning and sharing, reduce the cost, and we can improve the schedule of our production and improve the schedule of delivery to the customer. And level of integration, including internal integration, external integration and capability integration. And finally, those are the relationship integration. And what does it mean for internal integration? <clears throat> Look, internal integration is the very first step in achieving effect effective supply chain integration. If we say integration, but we don't have the internal integration, it's very difficult. The company internal structure had to be aligned and integrated. It's very difficult if we can maximize the strength of the company if we don't have alignment. And the whole system of a company cannot be integrated. So internal function must align along the processes that lead to the specific product and service value. And on the whole must align to an overarching corporate strategy. So it have to align from small division to a company, to the corporate function. So the Overall, the goal have to be alive from the top to the bottom. 
and especially communication barrier must be reduced between activity to enhance information flow through the organization. So to be effective in communication, we have to remove, lift on the communication barrier. Otherwise, the cost of communication will be very high. And internal integration is the first step to achieve an effective supply chain integration. Now, we understand about internal integration and what is about the external integration. External integration can only occur when internal integration and functional strategy have been aligned. If we align internally and we can talk about external and there must be consistent competitive goal and objective criteria across the supply chain within the, with the conflicting priority. And the cost reduction at the expense of other supply chain member simply transfers cost to the end of the customer lead into the higher price. Company have to take consideration on cost within the supply chain because whatever we do spend in the midway, finally it shoulder on the, on the hand of the final consumer. So that's why we have to do whatever it takes to reduce the cost within the supply chain. And look at this slide. The whole cost of supply chain from the seller to the user. And we have control valve for the cost from seller. What are the, the loss sign? What are the frequencies? And we go through what is the store side and the inventory and how much they spend for the handling cost. What about the capacity? And after this, it go to the main store. Train from the main store, what is the transportation capacity? And it have here the control valve of the cost. What are the store size, inventory handling capacity at the one store? And at the end, it go to the, the user. So the whole thing here, the cost by line from the seller to the user, we have to, at the supply chain, we have to think how we can minimize the cost of spending. Because at the end, the user, had, they, they have to spend uh, as much as we spend for them along the way. Any question so far? As supply chain, we have to do whatever it takes to balance between the cost and the risk. Like we said, whatever we change along the way, at the end, it goes to on the shoulder of the user, the consumer. That's why we have to minimize their cost. But when we're minimizing the cost, we have to balance between the cost and the risk. Storage insurance risk cost, trace cost, volume, discount, ordering, handling cost, etc. At the end, it go to the end user. And we have to help them 
to balance all the costs and the risk along the way. Here give you an example of a similar simple supply chain. Look at from, from the raw material from supplier side. And this is the final consumer who is going to yield the product. And you are supply chain. You do manage along the way on the logistic part, transport, storage, backing, handling, etc. From the raw material supplier through the component manufacturer, okay? We have to manage transport, storage, backing, and handling from raw material supplier to component manufacturer. After we do the production at manufacturing side, We have the component and we do assembler. Another time that we have to manage logistic part, transport from this manufacturing side to the assembler, okay? And from the assembler, we go to a retailer. We also go through another logistic circle, transport, storage, packing, and handling from here to here. And, and at the end, from the retailer, go to the final consumer. So the whole thing here is, is the supply chain, and we have to manage them from raw material supplier to final to optimize the cost of the final consumer with the value that we are offering to them. Okay. Element of world class supplier, world class supply chain management. What does it mean? Look at here, you will see the overall picture of supply chain management world class, including three components. Supply management. What can you supply to them? And how you do the management of logistic power to manage from the supply to connect to the demand. World class supply chain management nowadays it have the close connection from the demand to supply. And there is a chain logistic to connect from the supply to demand. And our job at the supply chain management world class is to optimize the cost of this supply chain. Okay, this gives you the overall picture of world class supply chain management. What you have to do. And how can you connect from the demand, demand side to the supply side? And what is the tool that you can connect from the demand to supply? Why worldwide? Why we do have to sort worldwide because of the cost at the price benefit worldwide they have the open market they have a the unlimited product supply and we open we sort worldwide we can accept the technology of a product 
or the process and we have the product and process with higher quality. And we can access not only to the sort available and introduce the competition to domestic supplier and to react to buying pattern of the competitor and establish a presence of the foreign market. So the question why we have to solve worldwide because of the big opportunity that we can accept to the product with higher quality with the current technology. So that is the benefit of the final sub customer that we are going to serve them. And we solved globally because also the benefit that are going to bring to our customer, we can buy the product with good quality, current technology with the lower purchase and the price cost. Greater product technology and we can improve the relationship with the supplier. And we, if we had an opportunity to to know more supplier globally, if there is a chance to build up a good relationship, and from the relationship, we can accept the process technology, and we have the greater supplier responsiveness, and we had a greater of of, of purchasing, great opportunity of bringing the cost down. Some benefit of global sourcing, some other benefit of global sourcing, we have better management of supply chain inventory. If we know exactly where we can buy, we know the lead time from uh, where to where for how long, then we can have better management of supply chain inventory. We have greater standardization of the sourcing process. We have higher material, component of service quality, and we have improved information sharing. So with the market of, of uh, global sourcing, we can have great benefit to serve our final customer. And from international to global, we have several level here from domestic purchasing to international purchasing and to global purchasing. We are here and we target here and we, do, we are going to global. And we go through from level one to level five. Level one, engage a domestic sourcing only. Level two, engage international purchasing as needed. And number three, international purchasing as part of sourcing strategy. Level four, integration and coordination across worldwide building buying unit. And level five, integration and coordination with other function group globally. So we are open the market from domestic to international to global purchasing. From domestic to international purchasing, we have no, when we have no suitable domestic supplier, we have to look out. We have competitors are getting competitive advantage from overseas supplier. If we know that our competitor, they can buy from foreign supplier, from overseas supplier, then they are in 
higher competitive advantage than us. So we have to have, we have to look out to make competition with them. If we have information about world results, why not? If we know some foreign supplier can supply with a better product, with a cheaper price, why not we open from domestic to international? If we can have a supplier that can help to solve the problem, we, they can help us to solve the problem. They can help us to solve the issue that we currently have. Why not? Control understanding language communication difference is later. Those are something that we have the benefit and we have barrier when we open from domestic to international purchasing. Some information about worldwide source, international industrial directory. We can have directory open up. We can have trade shows. We have a trading company that they can approach us to uh, introduce their product, introduce their service. They, we have, can have the third party support. We have a trade consulate agent. Those are the, some information about worldwide sources that we might want to have. Globalization sourcing offer a big opportunity. However, they also have a challenging associate with Now, supply chain element affected international. Number one, a number of elements in the supply chain are affected by the organization decision of international rights. Those are elements that affected supply chain. Number one, that is inventory. Inventory meeting local need require higher variety, but this often lead to large inventory. Number two, handling. Handling is demand. Handling these demand country specific regulation. So handling it's very specific regulation related. Number three, the word transportation. Transportation is heavily impacted by infrastructure in the country. So element of supply chain affected by international inventory handling and transportation. Those are the three elements of the supply chain heavily impacted. Inventory, handling, and transportation. Other challenges in the global environment. Those are international logistics operations have to face to the following challenges. Number one. Extended and unreliable lead time. Number two, multiple consolidation and multiple option. And number three, multiple 
freight mode and cost option. We have to take into account all the factor of challenging and meeting country or region specific demand requirement. Of course, when we do the global sourcing, aside from a lot of opportunity, benefit, we have to face with the challenging. We have to overcome the challenging to take all the benefit to improve competitive advantage. Now, what can we do when we face with challenging? An organization can follow a number of approach to increase their competitiveness in international markets, such as they have to focus factories. They cannot put factory everywhere, but they have to focus they have to centralize inventory and boss bondment. And we go later on, what does it mean specifically and how they can approach when they do can, uh, facing the challenging. What is the focus factory? Focus factory are structured around a product instead of a location. They have to structure around the product, not a location. And production at a central facility cuts manufacturing costs, but it also led to rise in transportation costs, of course, rise in local inventory costs, and increase at this time. We have to focus around the product. And another approach to face with the uh, challenging, that is the centralized inventory. What does it mean? Means we put inventory in the center. And centralized inventory, inventory has advantage of, number one, reducing duplication and safety stock cost. If we have an inventory centralized and we allow to balance the big demand across the region. We decrease the cost, but, but central line inventory, the cost saving might not be sufficient when special line transportation and lift tie are essential. So we have to balance between the risk and the cost. Another term, another term is both bond men. Both bond men is the final customization of a product e delay until a, the actual customer is identified. So we customize the product when we identify the actual customer. In the individual or regional design are based on a certain common component and design. A more generic inventory with a less stock variation is possible. And forecasting become easier as the product basic is generic and interchangeable. That we have the component, but then we customize at the end 
when we had the final customer is identified. So that is the meaning of performance. Focus, factory, center line inventory, and boss bondment. Those are the approach that we, as a supply chain, we yield to face with the challenges. And with the boss bond, uh, bondman, we can customize product can be provided at a low cost, just in time. A lot of them in the in supply chain, we uh, use direct contact. Direct contact should be chosen after a comprehensive cost benefit analysis outlining. That means we use direct contact or we use direct indirect contact. It depends the decision making after the cost and the benefit analysis. The organization have to be confident in the quality of the partner product and the service and independent assessment of the business environment and the practice in the partner country should be undertaken. And the costs involve everything from the travel expenditure, the cost of communication, the cost of bureaucracy, the cost of politics is later. So we have to, everything, we have to consider the direct, the direct cost or the direct contact. We choose demands. And look at here, direct contact various intermediaries. Direct contact involves the lowest cost of entering the new market, while intermediary simplify and ease the process and global sourcing. Over time, look at here, the organization will acquire international knowledge and saw the advantage of using intermediate view deep in it. So we have to choose whether we use direct contact or we use intermediary. Intermediary take on a wide range of roles. They can acting as a representative on behalf and the issue to be considered, the, rel the relationship between both sides should be based on trust and confidence. And intermediaries should be selected on the basis of demonstrated tec technical knowledge, competence, reliability, and efficiency based on a good track of people. That means we choose them based on the trust, based on the good track of record they have that. And the intermediary finance, reliability, quality of service, term and condition and price basic have to be careful analyzed. It's just like the evaluation process that we have to go through before we select them to be our representative. The option of licensing the agent can be also explored.
Most of the time, we select the agent and the step how to select the most appropriate age agent. Step number one, determine which operation are going to be and which operation can be delegated to the agent. That means we have to consider which operation and who are they? Step number two, pre-select the, pre -select the agent that specialize in the product and the operation that you require. The location where they are, the experience, the knowledge, the track of record of an, an agent can be represented. And step number two, after we do have all the information, then we compare whether agent cost, their service quality, select the best offer and negotiate all the condition. So as simple as that, we do the evaluation to select the agent. We do internal analysis to decide whether agent should be selected. Number two, we do the comparison, we do the evaluation to select the best agent that we normally do. Any questions so far? It look here. This slide show you how you select agent and representative. In the overall, if you look at here, the, the cost of transport option including the service. Okay, and determine the good in one needs to select transport mode to select an offer to pursue. You do analyze it internally. You analyze unique model and multi no model in transportation. What are the type of model, type of transport they have? Free for water, customer clearance agent is later. What service require? Packaging insurance, custom warehousing, advice, handling, import, export formality, etc. So you consider all the capability and the requirement that you need for your good, for your transport, that is the cost of the transport and option, including the service. What are everything in total that you consider? before you select agent or so you select representative. On the scope of work, on the cost, on the criteria of selection, and then you do on the evaluation at the end and you select them. And after that, you use the performance tracking record, the feedback loop, to improve, continuously improve the performance of agent or representative. Any questions so far, especially for this selection agent and representative? Okay, 
Then we continue. <clears throat> When we do global sourcing, there are several advantages. And the below are some of the advantages of trading in global market. Economy of scale. Lower cost, of course. Increase sale and profit because we have a open unlimited demand. We can connect within the unlimited demand to the unlimited supply. And we have greater opportunity to find better supplier because there are same role out there. We have a a connection to a better supplier. And because of that, we can have the benefit from advanced product and process technology. Those are the benefit of operating in a local environment. Economy scale, lower cost, increased sales and benefit, greater opportunity to find better supplier and benefit from advanced product and process services. Aside from a lot of advantage, we also facing with risk. Risk number one, they have fluctuating exchange rates. It's up and down and it's very difficult to Predict. They have inflection rate, not fluctuating, but also inflation. And because of in the global environment, we face with political and social issue. It's different from country to country. And not only that, Cultural difference is also another challenge. Language communication, that is a barrier. Transportation, transfer rate. So it's uh, different and facility from country to country is also different. Though are some risk of global environment to reach in risk. Influence of local government, it also political and social issue. Foreign company entering the domestic market because of if a foreign company, they entering a domestic market, they had to face all the things that we just listed. About. Any question so far? No, because we are facing with risk, we cannot avoid. That's why we have to find way to reduce. The risk related to global trading can be reduced by the, follow, the following. Straightforward information and process. And because of risk continually happen, so we have to keep constant communication and confirmation. Then we have a good record keeping and authorization staff member 
identify the agent on behalf at the local market. And we have the document management. And because of risk facing we every day, we have to define the strategy to reduce the risk. A firm can implement a number of strategies when dealing with the foreign markets to reduce them. Number one, speculative strategy. We have to be specific on the strategy, how to reduce risk. And we have the head strategy and flexible strategy. A substantial risk reduction has been achieved by developing an economic political alliance in EU, in Asia, to promote the trade liberalization. So we have to have the market. We have to develop economic and political alliance. EU is an example. ASEAN is another example. Asia Pacific is also another example. Any questions so far before we go to uh, another topic? <coughs> and we talk about the global sourcing. Global sourcing cannot be done without import and export. Very simple, export the firm sell it good and other service to another country and import is to bring it in. The firm bring into its home country good or services from other country. You have a cost, import and export, and uh, this just only to help you with the very key thing in documentation. Documentation is a vital part of import and export process. Unaccuracy or incompleteness of the documentation or late delivery can lead to the delay of clearance payment, losses and legal action and fine. So every document should be scrutinized for authenticity, deadline and presentation and expiry, and conformity with contract and credit requirement. So document of import and export must be very accurate. Otherwise, it causes the late of payment, the loss, and the legal action, and at the end, it could be the fact. And not only accuracy, it have to be, it must be completeness. Accurate and complete, that is the requirement for import and export documentation. So process to bring any uh, imported product from abroad, we have six steps as a summary. Number one, to confirm the required quality and quantity of the product or the service to be supplied. If we run to bring the product in, then we have to confirm the required quality and quantity. 
Number two, agree who will provide and pay for the transport, for the insurance and other services. What are the relevant, relevant costs? Who is going to pay for what? Number three, we have to agree between the buyer and the seller to the most appropriate term and mode of payment. And number four, agree to make relevant special free shipment or delivery requirement and condition. Number five, establish when and where the good become your responsibility. And final step, agree on jurisdiction that apply to the contract, to the settlement procedure in case of dispute. So those are the six steps that, that the, we agree between the buyer and the seller to bring the product from abroad. Okay. Any questions so far for the process in step? Now, those are the, the steps in importing product. And then we have international contract. We do global sourcing. Of course, international contract is very popular. So international contract are subjected to greater risk than national contract. Of course, when you are dealing with international customer, you are dealing with international supplier. So you are exposing the greater risk. The, that risk could be greater risk of damage or deterioration of the good, of the dispute in only different legal system. We are exposing to the different legal system. So that's why greater risk might come. The good contract that including the buyer obligation, of course, we learned in last call, the legal and the risk, risk and legal. So we have the, to set up the buyer contract and in the buyer contract, we uh, identify buyer obligation. What are the obligation of the buyer? What are the obligation of the seller? product description, quantity, quality, and especially in international contract, we have to specify in the inco term, inco term related to the transport term and condition, and how much we pay, and what are the remedies. So everything here that is a summary for you to oversee 
what should be included in the contract, international contract, when we do the global sourcing. Especially in core term is the must in every international contract. Any question so far? Any question so far? Otherwise, we go to the next slide. And this slide, this gave you the overall picture to bring from the good abroad into your country. Look at here. Assuming that you have, uh, um, okay. Look at here, you have the dogmatic seller. This A, foreign buyer, okay? And then this is the information, flow of information. This is the flow of good. From domestic seller, you have, we have the domestic bank, domestic bank here. And from domestic bank, you go to the domestic government, government agency. You have a foreign government agency and then foreign bank. This is the domestic seller. Export facilitator. And then from export facilitator, you have inland transportation carrier, dogmatic port, terminal of exist, international carrier. And from here, you have foreign base, foreign port, terminal of entry, then foreign inland transportation carrier and foreign smile. The flow of good, it go together with flow of information. You know where your good will be and where you should be, up to when. And this slide gives you some idea of major participation in international transaction. Any question so far for the major participation in international transaction? If not, then we go to logistic issue. When we do global sourcing, we are facing issue in logistics. The lack of knowledge and skill concerning the global sourcing. Not everything is clear, especially for unexperienced and unskilled um, staff. Logist resistant to change and the longer lead time. And we're facing with a lot of barrier, different business custom, language, and culture. And a lot cost hidden. Currently fluctuation, inflection, different from country to country. Especially when we do the global sourcing, and I said, we have to be master in incoterm. We must be master in incoterm to deal with international business, to deal with global sourcing, to set up 
uh, international contract. And in chapter seven, in the transport and delivery, I have one chapter very careful and detail of the term in Kotam. So we, you can refer back to chapter seven to learn in depth in Kotam if you deal with international business with global sourcing. Okay. Now we go through the issue in logistics, resistant to change. Resistant to change, it, it remain with established and routine sourcing pattern, shipping from long, this long standing supplier and domestic market nationalism. Long early time, extended material by line and forecasting over longer horizon and need to more closely manage delivery date, possibly a transit, a custom delay and greater logical, <clears throat> logistical, political and financial increase. <clears throat> Some cultural issue. It's uh, specific in business practice. The practice in business is not the same for every country. Language and cultural is also another challenge issue. That's why we need to manage them closely, manage the delivery closely and manage engineering chain along the way. We have to meet and negotiate with the supplier and we have to manage them in the different skill. We have learned about negotiation, how to set up a meeting, how to negotiate with the supplier and especially for foreign supplier, we have to understand the culture. And more difficult in interpersonal relationship, we have to manage professional business relationship and we have to manage personal relationship as well. Everything belongs to cultural issue. And the documentation that required for um, global sourcing, letter of credit, uh, multiple bills of lading, uh, doc receipt, import license, certificate of origin, certificate of insurance, packing list, commercial invoice, etc. Those are uh, some documentation that required during import export. And remember, in import export, not only complete, but accurate. On the document must be complete and accurate. Cost of international purchasing, common cost comparable to cost in domestic sourcing, purchase price of cost, tolling charge of cost, transportation from supplier to buyer. Of course, we have to pay on the transportation costs. And we have to pay on international transaction costs. Transaction cost is additional cost over and above domestic sourcing. We have to pay the cost for the bank. International transactions cost, including the base price, tuning cost, Packaging cost, escalation cost, transportation, custom duty, insurance premium, payment term, etc. So, those are the 
facing the basic cost during any transition. We pay additional fees and commission, port terminal and handling fee, custom broker fee, taxes, communication costs, payment and currency fee, inventory carrying costs. Any questions so far? Port terminal and handling fee. Of course, we have cargo, we are unloading, we have to pay for the fee, we have to pay on administrative service costs uh, and authorization, personal, uh, etc. Those are some costs that we pay during the port terminal and handling fee. Currency risk. Currency risk is another risk of international business or global sourcing. Fluctuation. The currency fluctuate daily. Purchase in US dollar and translate into uh, local currency, sharing currency in, flu in fluctuation risk. Currency adjustment, contract law, etc. Uh, currency hacking, blah, blah, blah. Those are the risks in currency, different from country to country. So that's why we have to think about the risk and minimize by term and condition in the contract during the global business. Any questions so far regarding the logistic issue? Other logistic issue with extended by line, additional planning management requires shipping delay to be expected, often less capable transportation infrastructure. So, uh, those are some risks we face with logistic issue during the global business. And uh, do we have any question regarding the, the barrier? Logistic issue. If not, then uh, we take about, uh, let's say about 15 minute uh, break uh, before we come back. Okay, we take a break.
Recording stopped.
Recording in progress. Okay, let us come back. Okay, let me check the but your participant for today. Okay. Hoàng Thị Thảo An. Yes. Hello. Yes. Can Can you hear me? Oh my god. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I start today to check your participation. Hoàng Thị Thảo An. Yes. Yes. Nguyễn Thị Thu An. Dạ có. Dạ có. Can you hear me? Dạ Thu An đây cô. Excuse me. You. I'm sorry. Teacher, I'm Thu An. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Đào Nguyễn Tuấn Anh. Đào Nguyễn Tuấn Anh, are you there? Yes, teacher.
Are you there? Yes, 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 teacher. Okay. I hear you very weak. Lương Phương Anh. Yes, teacher. Yes. Nguyễn Tuấn Anh. Yes, teacher. I don't know why. Okay. Nguyễn Tuấn Anh, yes. Yes. Võ Ngọc Kim Châu. Yes, teacher. Yes, thank you. Nguyễn Thủy Hạnh Duyên. Yes. Yes. Phạm Huỳnh Thủy, Thủy Dương. Yes. Vũ Minh Đức. Vũ Minh Đức ạ. À? Yes, yes, teacher. Vũ Minh Đức có không ạ? À? Yes, yes, yes. Vũ Trường Giang. Yes, teacher. Yeah, thank you. Trần Thanh Hải. Yes. Trần Thanh Hải. Yes. Lâm Ngọc Hân. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Ngô Văn Hiếu. Yes, teacher. Thank you. Trần Minh Hoàng. Yes, teacher. Yeah. Nguyễn Tuấn Huy. Dạ yeah, có. Thank you. Võ Trần Khánh Huyền. Yes, teacher. Võ Trần Khánh Huyền ạ. À. Yes, teacher. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Trần Bảo Hưng. Yes. Lê Nguyễn Quỳnh Hương. Yes, teacher. Thank you. Võ Thị Thanh Hương. Dạ yeah, có. Đỗ Quốc Khánh. Dạ yeah, có. Đỗ Quốc Khánh. Dạ yeah, có. Đỗ Quốc Khánh. Sorry. Lê Đình Khánh. Lê Đình Khánh ạ. À. Nguyễn Thủy Bảo Khánh. Yes, teacher. Thank you. Nguyễn Cát Ngọc Khê. Khê. Nguyễn Cát Ngọc Khê. Nguyễn Đăng Khoa. Yes, teacher. Nguyễn, Nguyễn Đăng Khoa. Yes, teacher. Can you hear me? Nguyễn Đăng Khoa có không em? Dạ, có, có luôn. Yes. Đặng Ngọc Thiên Kim. Yes, teacher. Đào Duy Lâm. Tất Hán có. Lâm. Đào Duy Lâm ạ. À. Dạ có. Tất Hán Lâm ạ. À. Dạ có, dạ có. Em Đào Duy Lâm ạ, à, cô. Có. Nguyễn Võ Khánh Linh. Dạ có, cô. Yes. Nguyễn Võ Khánh Linh nhá cô. Làm sao hả? Nguyễn Võ Khánh Linh có không em? Dạ có. Ok. Quốc Khánh có. Đăng Khoa có. Trần Hưng Hải Long. Yes, teacher. Thank you. Lê Thanh Mai. Dạ có. Lê Thanh Mai có không em? Dạ có. À, em nói lớn lên chút. Trần Duy Minh. Yes, teacher. Thank you. Phạm Đình Nam. Phan Đình Nam. Dạ có. Trần Hoài Nam. Nguyễn Hiền Đông Nghi. Em nghe ạ. À. Nguyễn Hiền Đông Nghi có không em? Dạ có ạ. À. à. Phạm Thị Kim Ngọc. Yes. Dương Ngọc Uyển Nhi. Dạ có. Nguyễn Thị Quỳnh Như. Dạ có. Nguyễn Vũ Quỳnh Như. Dạ có. 
Phan Thị Kim Anh. Phan Thị Kim Anh có không? Yes, I'm here, teacher. Yes. Hồ Thanh Phúc. Yes, teacher. Hồ Thanh Phúc có không ạ? Yes, I'm here, teacher. Yes. Hồ Lê Minh Phương. Dạ có ạ. Lê Hồng Quân. Dạ có ạ. Nguyễn Đình Minh Quân. Lê Thúy Quỳnh. Dạ có. Nguyễn Công Sơn. Dạ có. Nguyễn Công Sơn ạ. À. Trịnh Thành Tâm. Dạ có. Vũ Mai Quốc Thái. Vũ Mai Quốc Thái có không em? Nguyễn Mai Thanh. Yes, teacher. Yes. Hồ Thị Thu Thảo. Có. À. Hồ Ca Thi. Hồ Ca Thi. Hồ Ca Thi có không ạ? À? Nguyễn Đức Thịnh. Đặng Tấn Thọ, Bùi Nguyễn Thiên Thu, uh, yes, I'm here. Phạm Vũ Ngọc Thuận. Dạ có cô. Phạm Vũ Ngọc Thuận có không em? Dạ có cô ơi. Có không ạ? À? Dạ có cô ơi. À. Vũ Minh Thùy. Yes teacher. Trần Nguyễn Anh Thư. Yes Phạm Xuân Thi. Yes, teacher. Phạm Đình Loan Thi. Phạm Đình Loan Thi ạ. À. Dạ có ạ. À. À, Ngô Thị Thùy Trang. Dạ có ạ. À. Nguyễn Huyền Trang. Dạ có ạ. À. Tạ Phạm Thùy Trang. Dạ có ạ. À. Trương Thiên Trang. Dạ có Trương Thiên Trang ạ. À. Dạ có. Nguyễn Huỳnh Minh Trí. Có cô. Phạm Khôi Trung. Nguyễn Khương, Khương Sơn Tùng. Dạ có. Hoàng Gia Uyên. Yes, teacher. Trần Anh Việt. Dạ có. Hán Minh Vi. Dạ có và Trần Hoàng Hải Yến. Trần Hoàng Hải Yến. Hồ Ca Thi. Yes. Okay, anyone missing here? Rồi. Cô ơi, em là à. Nguyễn Cát Ngọc. Em là Nguyễn Cát Ngọc Phê ạ. À. Cô kiểm tra. I, I could not hear you. Probably. À, cô ơi, em là Nguyễn Cát Ngọc Phê ạ. À. Hồi nãy cô có điểm danh em chưa ạ? À? Tên em là gì ạ? À? Dạ Nguyễn Cát Ngọc Phê ạ. À. Nguyễn Cát Ngọc Phê. Đúng ạ. Dạ đúng rồi ạ. À. Rồi cảm ơn em. Dạ em cảm ơn cô ạ. Dạ em là Thảo A nó không biết nãy cô có nghe không? Sao dạ, em? Dạ em là Thảo An, Hoàng thị Thảo An đó cô. Hoàng thị Thảo An. Có rồi, ok. Dạ. Trần Hoàng okay. Hải Yến. Trần Hoàng Hải Yến gặp problem gì vậy? Ok. Um, Hôm nay là deadline là ngày 9 tháng Ôi. 6 rồi. Các em đã nộp mà Symmetra Project hết chưa? Ờ, cô ơi, cô. Rồi. Sắp bầu rằng là hôm nay là deadline nha. Ai mà chưa nộp thì là phải là nộp đi. Chứ không thì 
mình học cả một học kỳ mà mình để mình không nộp hay là mình nộp trễ thì mình bị trừ oan ổn đấy ok Ôi. mình biết cái ngày thi của mình là ngày 21 tháng 6 đúng không ạ 21 tháng 6 cô nhắc lại lúc 13 giờ thi trong 90 phút Rồi mọi thứ là rõ rồi đúng không? Dạ cô ơi. Any question so far nè. Dạ có. Ok. Cô ơi, cô nghe em nói không ạ? Làm sao ạ? À, mình thi lúc mình thi mình có cần truy cập vào zoom với lại mình mở webcam em có thể em nói uh, gần hơn một chút tôi không hiểu tại sao mà cái uh, cái 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 môi của tôi nó nghe nhưng mà nó nghe không được uh, tốt lắm có lẽ là internet connection à, dạ cô ơi, lúc mình thi mình có cần uh, truy cập vào zoom với lại mở webcam không ạ em có thể viết được không ạ make sure là tôi 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 hiểu ý hết ý em nếu câu hỏi của em xin lỗi ai đang hỏi đấy hả Trần Thanh Hải yes. Trần Thanh Hải Ok em có Trần Thị Hoàng Châu thì là cũng đã có rồi Câu hỏi là nộp project qua mail của cô ạ à, thì cô đã thông báo rồi. Trên Blackboard nộp qua email. Leader là đại diện nộp cho tôi. Nộp trước midnight là được. Ok. Nói chung là nộp trong hôm nay và nộp trước midnight này nó vẫn còn nằm trong cái deadline 19 tháng 6. Cố gắng. Giờ này mới có em một em là hỏi là 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 uh, các criteria nó đúng như thế nào? Tôi chưa hiểu. Dạ con nghe không cô? Bây giờ mới nghe, không hiểu là tại sao ạ? À? Dạ vâng, thì ý là tụi em làm á, thì tụi em chỉ làm là tụi em chỉ nêu ra các tiêu chí, còn những cái quay lưỡng nữa thôi. Nhưng mà không biết là mình có cần kiểu như là giống như mấy cái slide trước của cô là đưa ra các cái nhà thầu giả định để mình chấm điểm như người ta luôn cô, hay là mình chỉ cần đưa ra tiêu chí thôi. À... <cười> Tôi, tôi nói rõ cái mục đích là em đưa ra cái tiêu chí còn cái uh, cái tiêu chí mà cái 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 bảng mà em để đánh giá đó là cái bảng không phải là em đưa ra cho nhà thầu trong cái RFP á em gửi ra đó nghĩa là em gửi cho một cái nhà thầu cụ thể đúng không ạ và do đó họ cần rõ là các cái tiêu chí của em đưa ra là gì còn trong cái bảng evaluation mà mà tôi xe ra với các em á là cái bảng mà em để em làm việc với internal team không phải là để em em nói cho các nhà thầu là à tôi có nhà thầu A, nhà thầu B, nhà thầu C. Dạ rồi, dạ rồi, em hiểu. Rồi. Em, em hiểu chưa? À, cái RFP dạ là rồi. một là, là một cái để em gửi ra cho một cái nhà thầu cụ thể. 
Còn cái evaluation sheet là cái cái để em làm với internal team. Dạ, yeah, dạ yeah, rồi. Rồi, ok rõ ha. Rồi còn gì nữa không ạ? À? Có một câu rồi nè, ai ai bây giờ tôi nghe rõ rồi, bây giờ em nào có thể là nói cái câu hỏi của mình đây tôi có thể trả lời. Để mà make sure rằng là các em hiểu rõ để để để, để làm cái bài thi cho nó tốt nè. Cô cho tụi em xin mail để nộp project. Email của tôi là tôi đã làm việc trên Blackboard. Công bố rất là đầy đủ. Cho nên là em nào mà hỏi câu hỏi đó thì về xem lại Facebook của mình nha. Có một câu hỏi là đề thi có bao nhiêu câu? Thì nó cũng chỉ có một số câu và trong cái thời gian bài thi của em là 90 phút. Trong đó có những câu mà vừa có là bài tập. Nó có vừa là những cái câu tiểu luận. Và những cái câu mà hỏi là dựa trên là cái understanding là chính. Nè. Bài thi của tôi sẽ không nặng về lý thuyết nhiều mà bạn ra là cái 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 mức độ hiểu của các em ấy. Rồi cô, còn câu hỏi. Rồi em nói tiếp. Xin lỗi em tên em. Cô cô mấy cái phần mà backup trong slide á mình có cần phải ôm không cô? Có mấy cái phần backup á. Cái phần backup là cái phần để các em hiểu thêm thôi. Yeah. À, những cái phần backup là những cái phần mà tôi cũng provide thêm Mà những cái phần đó có thể không có cũng được Miễn là các em phải hiểu bài thôi Dạ, yeah. cảm ơn cô à, Và lại thì open book thì, thì các em được cái quyền open thoải mái Backup hay không backup thì nó không, không, không có vấn đề lớn đúng không? Ăn thua là mình hiểu nhiều hay không? Có một câu hỏi là Cô ơi, lúc mình thi có cần truy cập Zoom, mở webcam. Thật ra thì tôi cũng không biết cái chuyện này nữa tại vì cái đề thi thì tôi sẽ đưa cho nhà trường. Và nhà trường sẽ giao cho các em đúng vào cái cái giờ thi và các em nộp bài qua Blackboard. Rồi còn câu hỏi nào nữa không ạ? À? Rồi, nếu không có câu hỏi nữa thì mình đi tiếp một tí nữa ha. We do global sourcing. And the slide is about uh, the success factor for global sourcing. Look at here. Central, centrally coordinated and lead decision making. Decentralized site-based operational activity. From here, we can have real-time communication methods and then information sharing with supplier, availability of critical resources, and then sourcing and contracting system and internal purchasing office support. Those are the success factor when we are doing global sourcing, global purchasing. The future of supply chain, we have some forces shaping the future of supply chain as below. The major frog that shape the supply chain management can be analyzed using best analysis. Best stand for B is political, E is economic, S for social and T for technology. Those are the factors that shaping the supply chain future. And all of those factors will influence the 
strategic decision. Those are the four factors. Best B E S T. Best for tariff barrier environmental legislation. Those are the political factor and economic factor that influence the cost priority and the knowledge of economy. Social factor, sophisticating consumer demand aging population and technological factor advanced in communication and information technology. Those are shaping the future of supply chain material. And what are the environmental issues? Also another we are facing with the global warming and there is a growing need for a company to comply with environmental sensitive business conduct. Example, recycle, biodegradable packaging, reduce energy consumption in transportation, establishment of channel for returning work out product for recycling. So because of we are facing with a lot of environmental issues. So we are thinking about the strategy. How can we recycle the product? We buy the new product and we take the old product. We do the recycling. Green supply chain is another strategy that nowadays that the supplier who have the green supply, green production, he prefer, okay? When we use appropriately environmental responsibility can reduce both waste and cost for the organization. Some advantage of the green supply, we can include it obviously seen, resource saving, waste elimination, productivity improvement and efficient efficiency enhancement. Green supply chain is another strength, another advantage in supply chain management. And that enhance the competitive net, competitive advantage. And of course, at the end, it's cost saving through the resource saving. Future of supply chain and supply purchasing and, and supply chain. A recent study, and this is uh, predicted from the recent study, the major change nowadays, continue growing use of e-commerce. E-commerce is, have the great opportunity of growing. And global competitive pressure and cost competition is also another matter and detailed examination of performance. Some other trends that include increase the linkage between supply chain and business strategy, development of internet and communication, and limited resource and need for global reach and flexibility. The future of purchasing and supply. And this you have seen that is from the resin study. Now, your job at a supply chain is to manage the chain in supply. And the future of, uh, of supply chain management depends on the three factors. The three factors that determine the company competitive advantage of supply chain management. Number one, 
Alikiti. Alikiti. How fast you react to the chain, either in demand or in supply. Agility reacting to unexpected change in demand and supply. And number two, adaptability. Adaptability. Timely adapting and changing the market and the strategy. Remember, we develop a strategy, but then things change continuously. That's why we have to adapt the change to the market. We have to adapt the strategy. We have to change the direction to adapt the change in the market of supply and demand. And the factor number three, that's very, very important, that the alignment. Align each supply chain member interest to the goal, to the supply chain, to the corporate function. So we have to align from the bottom to the top, the direction from the top to the bottom. And all organization that have alignment is very important. That is key internal success. So the three factor for any chain in supply, and especially nowadays in global supply chain management, the three factor that we have to manage, that is agility, adaptability, and alignment. What the allegiance? Several ways of enhancing the allegiance of a supply chain. Number one, provide the data on the chain. Develop collaborative relationship. Design product that share common parts and processes, and keep small inventory because. Inventory is cost. Build dependable logistics system. Develop a team to implement contingency plan. So we have to several way to develop to enhance the agility. And number two factor that the adaptability. And ability to adjust supply network to change the need of supply and customer, including changing the market, changing in progress economic, change in political and social, and demographic change, technology, technological advance, and how can we adapt to those change? Another thing in adaptability, that is to enhancing the adaptability of an organization may involve the following. Understanding the need of the end customer. How can we understanding the need of customer? You have in the, in, in the market, some company that's specialized to do the market research. Market research just to understand the needs of the end customer. That include interview, that including the uh, the resort interview, the market, the research, etc. Just fully understand the need of the end customer. Then they understand the fine structure on ship. How's the change in the organization? How the change in, in, in organization structure? Relocating facility if it's required. So every decision making that involves the cost. So we have to do all the analysis first, then changing the resort of supply and changing the 
salt of demand, demand and supply. Remember, supply chain including demand, supply, and connection of the demand and supply. That is logistic. So we have to manage three factors, demand management, supply management, and logistic management. If you can connect that three factor, you are in the full picture. So adaptability including understanding the need of the end customer, identifying structural shift, relocating the facility if it's required, change the resource of the supply, outsourcing manufacturing if needed, and developing the new supplier to complement the existing one. And then we create a product design team who understand supply chain implication. Those are some way how we can adapt to the need, the quick, the fast need of the chain. And finally, that is alignment. One way to creating alignment in the supply chain team is to share risk, share cost, reward among supply chain members. And not only in the team, internal team, but we share the risk, share the cost with our supply in the chain externally also. A number of factors factor have to be considered when aligning the supply chain, alignment the information and alignment of identity and alignment of incentive. So the three factors that we have to be sure to manage the supply chain in the future, that the allegiance, adaptability, and alignment. 3A. So the trend in future trend in global sourcing, of course, you can de uh, development of higher level skewness set, the need to reach agreement on global performance measure, need to establish integrated system, continue development and refinement of global sourcing strategy and greater internal interaction. So in your other work that you have to upgrade your skill, understanding the market, understanding the, the end of the customer need and develop the internal system and integrate the system between the inter internal uh, team and the external customer. In order to do that, some other thing that you can see supplier highly capable, of course, you have to uh, look in the market, identify supplier, uh, evaluate their quality to look higher capable. Ship from component sourcing to subsystem system and serve service sourcing. So we have to do outsourcing and we have to do component. We have to look for example, exemplary. Continue cost reduction pressure. All way, low cost, low cost, low cost. And more supplier in low cost emerging market. So we have to look more in the emerging market because opportunity is there. Low cost opportunity is there. And this gives you the overall supply chain technology map. If you look at here, you will see this gives you the overall picture 
of supply chain technology. Okay, from the supplier to the customer, supplier to manufacturer, to distributor, to retailer, and to the customer. So you have here the, the map from raw material to final product from the supplier to the customer. And this look at here, you have operational and planning and strategic, okay? From the operational, you have a manufacturing, execution, warehouse management system, and ERP, enterprise resource planning, very um, powerful uh, system nowadays. Most of the company use this. And uh, you, we have SAB, right? and then uh, you have a uh, uh, miracle. Um, oh, I forgot the name. Uh, SAB, uh, we have uh, Hitachi just developed a system of ERB uh, in some team. We also another term that we can learn uh, that is for operation. In terms of planning, we have advanced planning and scheduling. Advanced planning and scheduling. You focus the market, you focus the demand based on the historical data. Forecast and adjust forecast and adjust. It is rolling forecast, okay? And you do have the strategic management of relationship, supplier relationship management, and customer relationship management. Up above, you have to develop the strategy to manage them. So the whole supply chain technology map give you the overall picture from supply to demand. At three level, operation, planning, and strategy. Any question so far for this supply chain technology map? Otherwise, we go through some of the globalization issue. Vast open opportunity for expansion and development can now be explored and thanks to the new accessible market and change in the technology. Barrier to consider include the need of expensive local markets to market product service and successfully. Increased pressure and in global infrastructure and channel for transportation. So there are some issue of globalization. Even though globalization sourcing nowadays offer a lot of new competitive market, new, new competitive advantage. To overcome that barrier, we have to act as a global citizen fully understand the local condition, think about globally and act, think about globally and act locally in specific. Many companies nowadays, including successful multinational company, they carry out a strategy, thinking global and act local. And that is a way they overcome the barrier in globalization. Any questions so far? I think that uh, uh, I give here for you for uh, further greeting in the backup, but most of them it already included in the chapter seven, chapter seven transportation and delivery, okay?
Any question so far? Any last question? Okay. If not, I would like to end the lecture today. And I thank you for all of you too much uh, for participation to the course. And I wish you good luck in the final exam. In the next, I think that about nearly two weeks. Okay. Thank you very much for today. And today is uh, our last uh, lecture. Thank you. Đào Duy Lâm. Có ạ. Dạ, có em có. À rồi, rồi. Tôi, tôi, tại vì em hỏi là à, dạ. Dạ. có điểm danh chưa thì tôi nói là, là có điểm danh rồi thôi. Đào Duy Lâm có rồi. Rồi có câu nào hỏi nữa không ạ? À? Vậy thôi nhé, cô chào, chào tất cả các em. Recording stopped.